<clears throat> well, thank you to, to Kelly and all the uh, teachers with Friendship Connection and those that uh, helped the, the children put the, the musical together the, this morning. You guys were um, encouraged by that, that story of Christmas. Well, uh, you know, we're down to 10 shopping days left. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems like everyone is, has some sort of advice for us as to you know, what the perfect gift would be for that, that person on, on your Christmas list. Now, one of my favorite commercials this Christmas season is the one by, um, by Fruit, of the, Fruit of the Loom. <laughs> and, um, you know, with that, with that Fruit of the Loom, uh, you know, advertisement, kind of their, their advice is that some people you should give underwear to and some you should not. <laughs> and then they proceed to, to help you know that it's probably appropriate to give underwear to uh, your, your family, but not to the person that delivers your mail, <laughs> not to your teacher, and not to your boss. But then the, the final line of the commercial says, you shouldn't give everyone underwear, or you shouldn't give underwear to everyone, but to those you do, give them fruit of the loom. So that's, that's one of my favorite uh, commercials uh, this Christmas season. But, you know, as we, as we get uh, closer to Christmas, it seems that every year that we are just consumed by, by commercialism. You know, but as Christians, you know, it's an issue that we should be consumed by the message of Christmas, that, that message of Christmas, of, of Jesus coming into the world. You know, maybe our problem is not at uh, Christmas that, that we um, give too much, but maybe we don't give enough. Maybe we don't give enough of the right gifts to those who need them the most. You know, this uh, Advent season, our series has been called uh, From Humbug to Hallelujah. And we've been looking at... Uh, Charles Dickens' story, A Christmas Carol, and taking scenes of that and, um, and making some parallels and, and connections in, in terms of challenges in our, in our own Christian life. Well, this morning we're going to look at a clip that, uh, where the, the ghost of Christmas present is uh, taking Scrooge to uh, the, the home of, of Bob Cratchit one of Scrooge's employees on Christmas Day and, and watching his family around the table. As Scrooge watches the, the relationships in, in the, the Cratchit household, his heart begins to, to soften. Scrooge recognized the value of, of relationships in, in the Cratchit family. And even though they may not have had a lot, they had a lot of love and, and those relationships were, were important. Even though they're their Christmas goose was maybe not the biggest and the best. They were thankful for what it was that, that they had. Scrooge began to, to recognize the significance of those relationships that were also lacking in, in his own life. In another scene about, about the same place in the movie, the, the ghost of Christmas present reminds Scrooge about the, the wealthy men who had come to, to talk to him just a few hours before on Christmas Eve, and, and those men were asking Scrooge if he wouldn't like to make a donation to, uh, to help the, the poor. And uh, to, to their request, you know, Scrooge responded and, and said, are the, are the poor houses still in operation? And they responded, yes. And then he said, well, how about the orphanages? Are the orphanages still in operation? And, and they responded, yes. And, and Scrooge expressed relief because he said, those are the, the institutions who is their primary job to aid the poor. And, and then Scrooge refused to, to give any money. One of the men said to him, but many would rather die than go to those places. To that, Scrooge said, then let them die and decrease the excess population. How could anyone be so hard-hearted? Scrooge is yet to understand that the riches of love far surpass the, the riches and, and wealth that he gained by, by the, the money that he had accumulated. He's yet to learn that generosity brings a joy which dollars cannot compare. The Cratchits, the Cratchits show Scrooge that 
that riches are found in relationships. Uh, the value of relationships is at the heart of the, the Christmas story as well. On the, the very first Christmas, this morning's scripture reading that Pastor Drew read at the very beginning of the service from, from Matthew chapter 1 that, that tells about an angel coming to, uh, to visit Joseph and, and telling Joseph that it's okay for, for him to take Mary as, as his wife. You know, Joseph demonstrated the treasure of the love that he had for Mary as well as his love for God, as his willingness to be obedient and, and to take Mary as, as his wife. Joseph was a good man. It says that Joseph was, was a righteous man, and he, he had a lot to lose in, in taking Mary as his wife. First of all, when he found out that Mary was pregnant, he knew that he was not the father. Would he ever be able to, to look past that? Would he ever be able to, to, to forgive Mary? You know, it would be known in, in the community that, uh, that Mary was having a child before Mary and Joseph were, were actually married. And, and if Joseph did not leave Mary, then everyone would assume that he was the father. So again, it would, people would make assumptions about Joseph and it would tarnish his reputation as, as a righteous man. In the Christmas story, Mary is often pointed to as an example as, of one who is faithful to God and, and willing to, to be used by, by God. But what about Joseph? It took courage for Joseph to, to respond to, to the angel's promptings. Joseph was asked to commit his life to, to something that, that none of us could, could ever imagine. He was to stand with Mary and, and accept this child to accept God's child and to raise him as his own. Joseph was, was one who would incur an embarrassment. His life would be filled with many questions and uncertainties. But yet, Joseph was committed to his relationship with Mary. Joseph was also committed to, to following God's leading in, in his life. In A Christmas Carol, Dickens gives us a picture of what it means to, to be poor in body, but rich in soul. He does that through the, the Cratchits, and, and particularly through the, the youngest child, Tiny Tim. Tim, who, who has physical problems, has, has physical challenges in life, Tim doesn't have a, a whole lot going for him. But as uh, Tim and his father return home from, from church on Christmas morning, you know, Mr. Cratchit tells, uh, tells his wife that Tim had said to him that he hoped that people saw him in church and saw him being this, this crippled child and that it might remind him, re might remind them on Christmas Day of who it was that made the, the lame beggars walk and the blind to see. It seemed that Tim was not just interested in himself and making life easier, but he was also concerned with others and seeing the goodness of God even in the struggles that he faced in life. You know, we get rich as we invest our lives in others. We store up treasures that last by giving ourselves to others. This week... I read about a, a touching story of a, of a family in, in the Martinsville area uh, who have a, a terminally ill son, and they chose to, uh, to give a wish, to, to grant a wish to, to another child. You know, their terminally ill son had been cared for by another student at his, his school, Levi Mayhew, a, a six-year-old boy who's been diagnosed with a rare genetic disorder that causes him to, to lose his ability to, to walk and talk and to, uh, to be independent. This disorder will probably take his life in, in a matter of the next couple years. But Emma Breuer, a 10-year-old girl in, in Levi's school, started looking out for him. She would watch him to, to come in the door of the school in the morning, and she would run to greet him. She would walk him to, to class. She would, would draw him pictures. She would encourage other classmates to, to draw him pictures, send him cards, to, to write him letters. You know, Emma made it her, her task to try and, and comfort Levi. Well, Levi and his family wanted to give a gift to, to Emma for her kindness to him. 
And so Levi's family recently had a surprise party for, for Emma. And as Emma arrived at the surprise party, she saw Levi in the crowd. And, and Levi was, had been upset. He'd been crying. And she went over to him and, and began comforting him and, and helping him to, to calm down. Well, after the, the dinner, they gave Emma a present. And as she unwrapped the present, it was a shirt. And on the shirt, it said these words, Levi wishes for Emma to go to Disney. As a terminally ill child, Levi was eligible to receive a, a trip or to receive a wish from the, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And Levi's wish was for Emma to go to Disney. It was an unselfish sacrifice from, from Levi and, and his family, a family facing the reality of, of Levi's uh, impending death. But they're still thinking of others. Emma's never been on a plane. She's never been to Disney. She, she's never been to, to Florida. But this week, she's going to experience the wish that Levi made come true to her. We live in a world where people are so focused on getting what they want. It's refreshing to hear of, of someone who is concerned about the needs of others. You know, Emma was concerned about Levi's comfort and his experience and his acceptance at school. Levi was concerned about Emma being able to experience the trip to Disney, something that she had never done before. You know, this morning as we think about next steps, as you think about what can you do in the, the coming week to invest in relationships, I want you to think about relationships that, that are important to you, relationships that that maybe you've not been putting the time into the, that you should. Some relationships that maybe you've, you've neglected for, for whatever reason. And, and so in this coming week, I want to encourage you to invest in relationships that are important in your life. Now, that investment in a relationship may not cost a lot of money. That investment in relationship, though, may cost some of your time as you invest in that relationship, as you spend time with that person that, that is important to you. You know, our memory verse this morning comes from, from Philemon chapter 1, verse 4. And in that verse, it talks about the importance of relationships. And as the Ap Apostle Paul writes to Philemon, he says, I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers. As we reflect on friendships, as we invest in friendships and relationships in this coming week, may we be thankful to God and remember that person in our prayers. Maybe we remember someone, maybe we try and connect with someone, maybe we're trying to strengthen our relationship with someone that we see every day. But maybe it's someone that we've lost track of, maybe someone that we need to call, maybe someone that we, we need to make an intentional reconnection with in order to invest in that relationship. Another way you could invest in a relationship this week is that there's going to be a time this week that undoubtedly you're going to be interrupted or inconvenienced by someone who, whose path crosses yours. Instead of trying to figure out how you can get rid of them quickly, how you can move on and, and get your agenda accomplished, maybe you take some time to, to pause to invest in that person who, who is inconveniencing you, to, to respond to them with, with the love and compassion of Christ. In the book of Philippians, Paul tells us that, that no matter what happens, no matter what comes our way, we should conduct ourselves in a way that reflects the gospel, respond in such a way that it reflects Jesus in our lives. So in this week, let me encourage you to invest in relationships. Let me encourage you to, to respond with love and compassion to, to those unexpected interruptions or, or inconveniences in your life. A, a third next step is, is to, to take the, the card that's in your bulletin this morning, a card that talks about our upcoming Christmas Eve services, and, and give that to someone and invite them to come to the Christmas Eve service. Uh, better yet, invite them to come with you 
to sit with you, to, to be with you as you experience the Christmas story together on, on Christmas Eve at, at one of our services here at the church. Relationships matter. Maybe we need to, to give more of the right kind of gift this Christmas. Maybe we need to give more of ourselves as a gift of love as we invest in relationships with others. Let us pray. Lord, may you help us to, to invest in relationships that matter in this coming week. May you help us to invest in relationships in ways that, that honor you. And as we give a gift of love this Christmas, may our hearts be changed and may, others, may the hearts of others be touched as well. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.